My sister like patted a red back once and I don't think I've seen my parents more freaked out. She what a red back? Like patted a red back spider right. when she was like five. She didn't know that it was a red back, like it was poisonous and stuff. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was more just like you just have to be aware, especially around like heavy Perf. coastal. No, coastal sorry. Areas. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> you do. Right. But like heavy coastal areas and just especially in like the summer. Because okay. like if you leave a towel, a wet towel around, then like there are spiders mm. the next day. Yeah, it's like there's a lot of food these days that are very sort of manufactured to oh, yeah. the current person, the yeah. current modern person's taste. Yeah. Maccas. Maccas. <laughs> We've all done it. We've all done it. Like 2 a.m. Maccas, right? Okay. Um, <clears throat> if it's anyway. open in Perth. Just kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow, this poor Dex and Mott's stopping. I'm not even doing anything to no, help No, there's it. a 24 hour one. It's just a bit of a drive. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you got to do like a 10 hour, right? You got to do a 10 <laughs> Not really a Maccas run, it's Maccas drive. <laughs> 2 a.m. You come back with a Maccas burger at like. Oh, like me and my. I have like great friends in Perth, and like something that we'd do was we'd go to Maccas and then go to the beach. Because, like, Perth, it's not like here where you've got beaches as headlands. Yeah. You've got, like, beaches as, like, long stretches. Okay. So, like, you could go anywhere. But, like, the only issue is, like, the beaches all, like, cross. So there are no, like, definite... You know how you've got, like, Bronte and Bondi? And, like, yeah. you definitely know this is Bondi and you definitely know this is Bronte. Yeah. In Perth, it's, like, one just stretch. Okay. Where you sort of, like, have these weird, like, boundaries and you don't really know where which beach is so like you it's literally like swan bomb beach dog beach nudist beach like trig like it's that sort of stuff that we'd go down and we'd sit on the beach and eat maccas on the beach and that's some of like my favorite memories that i have oh (laughs) (laughs) and there's maccas involved and there's maccas involved okay of course sometimes you need to like treat yourself a little bit (laughs) yeah all right How do you feel about like those places where where it's like super touristy, but then apparently the locals hate it? Like they think it's like yeah, not the best place to go to around the area. Oh, Perth isn't. I don't. I think Perth only really got touristy when like they read it up all the Elizabeth Key and the foreshore and everything. Right. But I don't see Perth as a very touristy city. Like you could walk down Sydney or Melbourne and be like, whoa, there's a lot of tourists here. And like in London or Berlin, you're like, okay, this, there's a lot of tourists here. But in Perth, you don't really have that feel because it's really isolated. People wouldn't usually come to Perth. <laughs> okay. I'm really, like, yeah, I'm really just having a go at where I'm from. But like, I just don't, it doesn't, Perth doesn't have a touristy feel. Okay. But it's definitely very isolated. All right. So you have to go there for a reason. Yeah. Sandboarding. Sand. Yes, I've done sandboarding. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I know. But the only issue is like whenever you go down the hill, you have to climb back up. up. Yeah, but that's fine. Like I actually run back up to oh, like really? go down again. Yeah, it's so fun. I just I just try and get someone to drive me <laughs> to the top. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's actually a driver that drives you to the top. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. Because like we go down to like Calbarry, which is like Monkey Maya. So like the videos of all the dolphins in Perth. Right. There's a few like videos like floating around the internet, and there are places up the coast that are just stunning okay and one of them is calbarry and they do sandboarding there because Ooh. the dunes are just like massive so you have to like wax up your board and everything it's like going surfing but on the sand and yeah i'm not really a fan of sharks so <laughs> <laughs> so, so just do it in the sand so just do it in the sand and it's fine well yeah. the snakes though oh they stress me out <laughs> have you ever come across a snake yeah really like a good like, sandboarding not well, sandboarding sand- oh, like but like in, the in primary school there were snakes around you'd see like them. the school yeah that's dangerous. Yes. <laughs> there were snakes and magpies and like you, you, I remember there were snakes on the oval at one stage, like in the bushes, like kids went a lot on the playground because there was a snake. Like, yeah. We also had like lightning hit the school once and started a fire in the bush near us. Wow. Yeah. You know, the chance of getting hit by a lightning is like the same chance that you'd get for winning the lottery, by the way. Just fun facts. You know what? There. I know what I would have preferred. About <laughs> <laughs> All right. But okay. So, so you get a lot of like, Weird stuff happening in your schools in Perth. Yeah, the primary schools especially. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, like, when you see a snake or something, you go tell the teacher and the teacher would sort of block that area off yeah. or something. Yeah, I remember the teacher doing that a bit. But, like, there's snakes around, like, the beaches. Like, on the beaches there are snakes wow. there too. Like, there are all these, like, snake warning signs. My gosh. It's pretty, like, dangerous. And then there are, like, the redbacks and all the... And then the ants that bite and, like... <laughs> like, yeah. My sister, like, patted a redback once and I don't think I've seen my parents more freaked out. She what a red back? Like patted a red back spider right. when she was like five. She didn't know that it was a red back, like it was poisonous and stuff. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was more <laughs> just like you just have to be aware, especially around like 
heavy coastal coastal areas (laughs) you do but like heavy coastal areas and just especially like the summer because like if you leave a towel a wet towel around then like there are spiders the next day so spiders get attracted to wet towels yeah like the beach towels okay i didn't know that yeah it's just okay i don't like spiders (laughs) or like sharks Oh, there's so many sharks in Perth. Really? Yeah. You've actually seen them? I, like, we've been in the water with our cousins and our lifeguards come and been like, hey, there's a tiger shark swimming this way about 100 metres. You might want to get out of the water. And, like, Perth lifeguards are really chill. It's so, like, you might just, <laughs> just want to, like, consider getting out of the water. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's so fast. But, like, we had the Prime Minister, like, killed by a shark, didn't we? Like, someone, some important politician was, like, Killed by a white shark. Yeah, wow. there's a lot of white sharks. Like, okay, you've been. I've been at the beach where there's been like shark alarms, and then yeah, they're a bit scary. I feel like I know. Sorry, you were gonna keep going. No, like there was one time where like my friend was on a subboard and the white white pointer went under his under his board. He was on a surfboard, like a subboard. So they're like the giant surfboards. Yeah, because Perth's got no surf. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Like no, like Coslow area. Like if you go down to Margaret River and like the beautiful wine country, there's yeah. a lot of surf. But like a lot of people are on like, sorry, a lot of men are on subboards. Like my little sister has six subboards, and oh. it's the cutest thing. Oh. Um, yeah, just the videos I get from dad are hilarious. Um, but he was on a subboard, and the white pointer went under. That's yeah. crazy close. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. I would I would panic. Freak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, she and he managed to sort of just he saw that and then just like sort of Yeah, I think he just to went get like, out just of it. Get in, like get in the water as fast as get out of the water yeah. as fast as he could. And yeah. I don't think he went back in for like a month. Okay. Yeah. Got scarred for a month. Got scarred for a month. Wow, I feel yeah. like I know Perf so well already. <laughs> oh no, what have I done? <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, it's people like, like yeah, well, like, people, my cousin came over from Sydney and she was like, I thought Perth was a dust pit. And I was like, no, we have running water. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. It's beautiful. There are some times where, like, at Scarborough Beach and you're, like, dancing at night and it's the sun setting because the oh. sun sets over the beach. Right. It's beautiful. Nice. It's really gorgeous. Yeah. Okay, so that's the one saving grace. After beating all the white sharks and the red backs yeah. and the snakes. You can salsa dance on the beach. And, like, watch the sunset. Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. And you mentioned that your favorite films are Devil Wears Prada yeah. and Shot Time 12. 12. Yeah. Okay, cool. And... The kind of Do- documentaries. Any documentary, I'm just obsessed. <laughs> All right. Um, Devil Wears Prada, what struck you about that one? Um, I think because it was the first, um, it was the first, like, proper movie that I saw when I was younger. Mm. Like, you know, you watch all, like, the Disney movies, but it was the first one that actually had, like, a decent plot. I don't decent plot um yeah. but like first time i ever saw meryl streep act and i'm a huge meryl streep fan okay so that's what really drew me to it but also like the cast is amazing mm, yeah. and like that monologue is just flawless <laughs> that she says about like the blue like this isn't blue this is like turquoise and like you need to step it up like it's not fashion like it's life like that's probably one of my favorite pieces well i feel like you might have me- have it memorized I, I sort of do but i haven't done it in about two years <laughs> okay we might do a little improv later. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can talk about that for sure. Um, I definitely think that there's a huge gap between the generations, even with our people I've spoken to about it. Um, but then again, we are the ones that have this... We're the ones that sort of have to make this change. And you can see the shift in politicians and with, you know, the Swedish Greta Thunberg, mm. her name is. She is phenomenal. Like, we, I'm doing physical theatre at the moment, which is, like, dance, acting combined. And our whole piece is about the earth. And I really think that we're the generation that sort of has to make a stance about it because, in reality, we don't have much longer before we actually start doing a fair bit of damage. And it's a simple thing, like, turning your tap off or, like, having a bamboo toothbrush. And it's the little things that can really make a difference so okay and you're doing a play at the moment about the earth so it's physical theater which is um a combination of dance and acting and speaking it's very niche but it's a lot of fun it's all physical so it's all like making shapes and creating stories with our bodies and using specific words so it's not really an acting play it's and it's not a dance piece but it's somewhere in the middle and the woman who's doing it is phenomenal at it but it's definitely with all the research that we have to do about it it's definitely quite alarming to see how quickly the earth is warmed up okay 
Oh, my toothbrush is bamboo. So, um, okay. so like you can get like bamboo toothbrushes that like instead of having plastic ones, you can just put these ones in the recycling, and then you're not like throwing away plastic because like toothbrushes like end up in landfill. You can't recycle them. What do you mean by bamboo? The 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 handle is bamboo. Or? Yeah, the handle is like bamboo, and I think the brussels might be bamboo too. Oh, oh so right. Yeah. Bamboo. Yeah. Where did you get those? Um, a shop in Perth. <laughs> okay, I'm sure. I'm sure you can get them online here. Yeah, yeah but like things like using like metal straws mm. and just being aware of how much plastic you're using and getting like and bringing your own bags to the supermarket is like bonus points. Okay, so do you feel that we're sort of making good progress in terms of uh, being more environmentally friendly, or do you feel like there's a lot more that can be done? I think there's a lot more that can be done, definitely for sure. So like practically like just getting rid of plastic bags. Yeah, like everywhere. why why would why would they bring them back? Like they got rid of them and then they're like, hang on, we can make a profit. And I think that's says something about the really big companies that have a lot of market space. Just something as simple as bringing a bag stops them selling plastic bags, and if they don't aren't making profit, then they'll take them away. Like and people just don't understand, yes, it's only fifteen cents. But that fifteen cents if you donated it to a charity that works with, you know, climate change and climate restoration and stuff like the Great Barrier Reef, like donating to those companies and like think about how many bags they go through in a day around Australia and how much money that could make an impact with. Yeah. Do you know any Shakespeare? Um, I know the titles. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. I don't know any other ones. Hey, Macbeth. Yes. Uh, Hamlet. What do you call Macbeth if you're in a theatre? King. No, I just came back from, I was just at the Globe, which yeah. is the massive Shakespeare, which is like the coolest place ever. Um, but you're not actually allowed to say Macbeth in a theatre because it brings bad luck. So you have to call it the Scottish play. Oh. Yeah. I've heard of that before, but I didn't hear that you have to call it the Scottish play yeah, or this, this other name that you have to yeah. call it by. It was funny to watch people get confused when they were like, the Scottish play, and people were like, what Scottish play? And then you've got to bring them out uh-huh. of the theatre yeah. to explain it. it. And then they won't even say it. They'll sometimes say like it backwards. So you're sort of like, what, what are they saying? Beth like, Mac? Yeah. Ooh. So then they're not saying it. They're like, you can work it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were funny. The okay. guides are funny. Um, would you like to learn some Shakespeare? I uh, don't know. Okay, cool, great. Let's do it. <laughs> um, so Shakespeare's language is like a language of its own. Like I like hated Shakespeare in high school, did not like it. But then, you know, my acting coach completely turned me around. And there's something very beautiful about it, but you have the best advice that she gave me was like, you have to find a play that really you connect with and it just understand that play and then you can branch off into other plays. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of my favourites is Taming of the Shrew, which mm-hmm. Meryl Streep performed in, and mm. I'm in love with that woman. Um, so do you know Taming of the Shrew? I know of it only because of that movie about yeah. it. Um, ten Reasons Why I Hate You, I think, or something. What is that movie <laughs> ten, called? Ten Things I Hate About You. <laughs> <Ta-da>! <laughs> so we're going to do um, Catherine's... Ca- Catherine? It's Catherine. I haven't done this okay. <laughs> no, monologue. And it starts off, it's so she's like been beaten down. Okay, so a lot of people think that this play is a fem like it's anti feminist because like her husband is like beating her down because. Um, like verbally, yeah. So like because it's written in a certain, I could talk about this for ages, because it's like written in a certain time period, women had to get married. Otherwise, they'd become slaves or house the people that just weren't valued to society. And because their father is quite well-known um he wants to marry off his daughters but his second child bianca is like stunning gorgeous everyone wants to be her suitor but he's like "Uh, uh, uh, you gotta marry the first one first and one person steps up and goes okay fine i'll marry her and he ends up like breaking her like beating her down not feeding her and just so it's like physical him. abuse. Physical abuse, yeah. yeah. But a lot of people be like, that's a sexist play, but it's not because he's doing the same thing to himself. Mm. And it's really about him gaining respect from her. Mm. So then she respects him and then they become equal, which is really forward for Shakespeare if you consider what time it was written in. Mm. And it's the same with like Lady Macbeth and Macbeth. And so this monologue was written when she was like starving and drowning in her own tears okay um but at the end of the play she turns out that she's a better wife than her sister Mm. 
So it says, it starts off with the more my wrong, the more his spite appears. Mm -hmm. Can you say that? Say that again. The more my wrong. The more my wrong. The more his spite appears. The more his spite appears. Yeah, so the more, so the more I'm wrong, Mm -hmm. the more angrier he gets. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, what, did he marry me to banish me? Beggars that come unto my father's doors upon entreaty have a present arms. If not, elsewhere they are met with charity. Which basically means, like, so, like, beggars will come to her father's door and ask for money, and he will give them money. But, like, her, his daughter is starving and being beaten. Why isn't he giving me anything? Mm. But I, who never knew how to entreat, nor never needed that I should entreat and starve for me, giddy for lack of sleep, basically saying I shouldn't have to beg because I'm a lord's daughter. And... Sorry, I'm just trying to process it <laughs> quickly. But I never knew how to shoot and start with oaths kept waking and with brawling fed and that which spites me more than all these wants is that he does it under the name of perfect love. Mm. So everything he's doing it to her, every cruel and horrible thing, he's only doing it to her because he loves her, mm. which is sort of messed up mm-hmm. in a way. Mm-hmm. And it's it can be interpreted in heaps, heaps of different ways, but it's definitely very forward for the time it was written in. How do you interpret it? How do I interpret it? Um... So I think with that, especially with Taming of the Shrew and when it was written, I think people really need to take in the context of the time Shakespeare wrote it, which was, you know, women were second-class citizens. They didn't really have a stand in society. They were there to make men look good. That's Shakespeare was a raging feminist. So having a character like this is still so relevant today because we still, you know, as women, we still struggle to be equal with men which sounds horrible but like if you look at the pay difference and all that kind of stuff it's it's still there and it's still very relatable in our society but I think it's unfair to compare it to our society now Mm -hmm. when that would have been normal when it was written if that makes sense Mm. so I think it's very relevant we can learn something from it and that's how I interpret it. Cool. <laughs> yeah. And th- that's one of your favorite plays. Yes, and definitely. And is this like one of your favorite um, monologues yes. from that play? Yeah, it's definitely, it's oh, like, it's the f- first monologue that I was like, oh, I connect to this. Because I've done Shakespeare monologues before and I've sort of been like, uh-huh, I don't know what I'm saying. Like, I don't really understand the message of it. But this one, I was sort of like, I get it. Okay. I get this, yeah. Hey everyone, thank you for hanging with us on the Convo Couch and thank you to Storm for coming on today. Hey, thank you so much. It was fun. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe on the links below and check out the links to Storm's profile too. See you next time. Bye.